Okay, so this is the crux, generalization. And there's two sub-questions. There's one which is about sample efficiency, which is why should it take so much more data for these models to learn than humans? There's a second about even separate from the amount of data it takes, there's a question of why is it so hard to teach the thing we want to a model than to a human, which is to say, for to a human, that we don't necessarily need a verifiable reward to be able to, you're probably mentoring a bunch of researchers right now, and you're you know talking with them, you're showing them your code, and you're showing them how you think, and from that, they're picking up your way of thinking and how you, they should do research. You don't have to set like a verifiable reward for them that's like, okay, this is the next part of your curriculum, and now this is the next part of your curriculum, and oh, it was th this training was unstable, and we gotta, there's not this schleppy, bespoke process. So perhaps these two issues are actually related in some way, but I'd be curious to explore this, this second thing, which feels more like continual learning, and this first thing, which feels just like um, sample efficiency. Yeah. So, you know, you could actually wonder, one, one possible explanation for the human sample efficiency that needs to be considered is evolution. And evolution has given us a small amount of the, mo the most useful information possible. And for things like vision, hearing, and locomotion, I think there's a pretty strong case that evolution actually has given us a lot. Mm -hmm. So for example, human dexterity far exceeds, I mean, robots can become dexterous too if you subject them to like a huge amount of training and simulation. But to train a robot in the real world to quickly like pick up a new skill like a person does seems very out of reach. Yeah. And here you could say, oh yeah, like locomotion, all our ancestors needed great locomotion, squirrels like, so locomotion yeah. maybe like we've got like some unbelievable prior. Yeah. You could make the same case for vision. You know, I, I believe Jan Lacan made the point, oh, like um, children learn to drive after 16 hours, after like 10 hours of practice, which is true. But our vision is so good. At least for me, when I, mean, I remember myself being five year old, my I was I was very excited about cars back then. And I'm pretty sure my car recognition was more than adequate for self-driving already as a five year old. You don't get to see that much data as a five year old. You spend most of your time in your parents' house. So you have very low data diversity. Yeah. But you could say maybe that's evolution too. But then language and math and coding, probably not. It still seems better than models. I mean, obviously models are better than the average human at language and math and coding, but are they better at the average human at learning? Oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. What I meant to say is that language, math and coding, and especially math and coding, suggests that whatever it is that makes people good at learning is probably not so much a complicated prior, but something more, some fundamental thing. Wait, I, I'm not sure I understood. What, what, why should that be the case? So consider a skill that people exhibit some kind of great reliability or, you know. Um, yeah. If the skill is one that was very useful to our ancestors for many millions of years, hundreds of millions of years, you could say, you could argue that maybe humans are good at it because of evolution, because yeah. we have a prior. Yeah. An evolutionary prior that's encoded in some very non-obvious way yeah. that somehow makes us so good at it. Yeah. But if people exhibit great ability, reliability, robustness, ability to learn in a domain that really did not exist until recently, then this is more an indication that people might have just better machine learning period. Mm -hmm. But then how should we think about what that is? Is it a matter of, yeah, what is the ML analogy for what? There's a couple interesting things about it. It takes fewer samples. It's more unsupervised. You don't have to set a very, like a child learning to drive a car. A child, children are not learning to drive a car. A teenager learning how to drive a car is like not exactly getting some pre-built verifiable reward. They're, it comes from their interaction with the machine and the with the environment. Um, and yeah, it takes much fewer samples. It seems more unsupervised. It seems more robust. Much more robust. The robustness of people is really staggering. 
Yeah. So it's like, okay, and do you have a unified way of thinking about why are all these things happening at once? What is the ML analogy that would that could be it could realize something like this? So 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 um, this is where you know one of the things that you've been asking about is how can you know the teenage driver kind of self correct and learn from their experience yeah. without an external teacher, and the answer is well they have their value function mm. right they have a general sense which is also by the way extremely robust in people like. Whatever it is, the human value function, whatever the human value function is, with a few exceptions around addiction, it's actually very, very robust. And so for something like a teenager that's learning to drive, they start to drive and they already have a sense of how they're driving immediately, how badly they're unconfident. And then they see, okay, and they, and then of course the, the learning speed of any teenager is so fast after 10 hours, you're good to go. Yeah. It seems like humans have some solution, but I'm curious about like, well, how are they doing it? And like, why is it so hard to like, well, how do we need to reconceptualize the way we're training models to make something like this possible? You know, that is a great question to ask. And it's a question I have a lot of opinions about. But unfortunately, we live in a world where not not all machine learning ideas are discussed freely. And this, this is one of them. So... There's probably a way to do it. I think it can be done. The fact that people are like that, I think it's a proof that it can be done. There may be another blocker though, which is there is a possibility that the human neurons actually do more compute than we think. And if that is true, and if that plays an important role, then things might be more difficult. But regardless, I do think it points to the existence of some machine learning principle that I have opinions on, but unfortunately, circumstances make it hard to to discuss in detail. Even nobody, though nobody listens to this podcast, Ilya. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.